all right so we wrote our first test in the previous video and everything seems to work as expected but what if something fails in your test there are informative logs that you'd get in the report post failure but sometimes the error message might not point exactly to the source of the error to get to the source you have to manually use the application step by step to see where it's going wrong playwright actually has a ui mode that lets you debug through your tests so let's see how it works actually before going to the ui mode let me show you the headed version of these tests so in the last video when we ran tests they ran headlessly which means you did not see the execution on screen all the execution happened in the background if you want to see the execution you can use the headed flag so i'll run the test now npm pw test and i'll pass in the headed option you now see that it opens up a new window for each of these tests and you can see that all the tests failed here because i guess i did not have the application running so yeah let me do that npm dev and we'll do this again So the login test did pass. You can ignore these two tests for now. The problem here is that it ran too fast. We did see a new browser window opening up. We also were able to see that it went to the actual application and it tried to log in. But since it was too fast, it is difficult for us to comprehend what exactly happened. So we can actually bring the speed down by making some changes in the configuration. I'll go inside the Playwright config file and inside this chromium project i'll simply add a new option inside this use options object the option that i'm looking for is launch options this again is an object and inside here i have a key called slow mo so it lets you uh, reduce the speed of your test it's going to happen in slow motion i'll just give it like 1000 milliseconds for now let me save this and now let's do this again Let's try to run our test. I'll clear this and I'll rerun this. This time you'll see that it goes to the actual form, it fills in the username password and then it closes the browser. So this time you were at least able to see how the test progressed in real time. Also while we are at it, let me actually pass in another option called headless and set it as false. So now when I'm running the test I don't have to pass in this headed option. I can directly run it and it's going to work as expected. Let me close all these reports. Now if you want to pause and debug your test in this headed mode, you can add this method that's present on this page instance called pause. So I'll just add page.pause at the very top of our test. So right when our test begins it's going to pause the execution. After that we can navigate through the test as required. So yeah, let me save this and I'll rerun the test. This time it won't execute right away. It will pause at the very first step and you'll have an option yeah, you get this player and inspector window. It has this page dot pause here which is acting like a breakpoint. Now if you want to debug your test you can simply step over. So I'll click on this and it's going to go to the next step if i click on it now we are on the login form it will look for the username field and it will fill it with user it's actually filled it with user you are not able to see it but yeah you can see here that we have the user string inside the field i'll go one step forward and the password field is also filled now it will click on the login button and you'll go to this screen once this is done everything will be closed and our test ran successfully this page dot pause that we used here to turn this headed mode into debug mode can be done in a different way as well there's literally a separate debug mode option which i'll come to in a few minutes but yeah you can use this pause method to add breakpoints in your test i'll remove this for now so now that we have seen the headed mode let's see what the ui mode can do So to run your test in UI mode all you have to do is add a UI property after the test command. So I'll do that pnpm test and I'll pass in UI. 
Now this will open up a new window with all your tests inside it. And you can now individually run any test and see different stages of its execution. So we have our login test here. I'll just run it. You will see each step that gets executed. And when I hover over it, you'll find the corresponding UI state over here. So it first goes to the actual application page. Then it will fill the username field by locating it first. Then it will do the same for the password field. It will click on the login button and then it goes to the main to do list section wherein it will check the page if it has a heading of to do list. So yeah, you can see all the steps laid out here and its corresponding UI state in this section. You also have this metadata tab that gives you additional information on on the environment. You get access to the network tab here, the console, the errors, the logs and some additional blocks that could come in handy. Using this locator option, Playwright will give you the best locator for a specific element. Since there are like 10 different ways you can locate an element on the screen, you don't have to think about the best way to get the element. So if I click on it and I, let's say, select this particular input field, it will give me the best way to locate this element, which is by using this get by placeholder method. Now, while you can debug here and see what's happening at each step, there's a specific debug mode, as I had mentioned earlier, that gives you control over the execution flow, just like a debugger. So when you passed in the page.pause as a breakpoint inside your test, it actually opened up the test in debug mode. So instead of doing that, we can actually do it directly by passing in an option. So all I'll do is run the same test command again, but this time I'll pass in the debug flag. This will open up a new Chromium window along with the Playwright Inspector as we had seen earlier. Inside this inspector, you'll see the test and we also have some controls at the top. They look very similar to what you would see in a Chrome debugger. We had already seen how this works previously, so no need to go over this again. The option at the top here, this option, helps to locate an element. It's essentially the same feature that we saw in the UI mode. If I click on it and I select any element inside this page, it will give me the best locator for that element. There's also a record button at the top here. Now you would think that all this record button does is maybe record the test flow and create like an MP4 and then give it to you so that you can share it across the team. That's not what it does though. You see, after I'm logged in, I can do things inside this application. It actually is like a localhost instance wherein I can run my application freely. So if it's just simulating this test flow, why would it allow me to use the app freely? There's a reason behind it and this is where things change completely. So I'll come back to this record button because it will literally change how you write your tests going forward. Now there's one more way you can bring up the Playwright Inspector and that's using the code gen command. Up until now, we were using the test command with debug or UI as properties. Now let's see what happens when we run the code gen command. So pnpm pw code gen. This will again open up a Chromium instance and also the Playwright Inspector. But you'll notice a few things that are different this time. Firstly, the recording is on by default and we have an empty test in this inspector. Let's see what happens when we go to the localhost page. In the inspector, you'll notice that we have a new action. It actually wrote the navigate action for us. So I hope you see where this is going. Let's fill in our username and password as we would do like a normal user. So user and password and I'll click on the login button. You'll see that this recording is actually recording our steps inside this application and it's writing the test for us. It's literally creating the code for each action that you would normally do manually. So all we did was use our app just like any other normal user and CodeGen generated the code for us. It also supports assertions. So the way we were using assertion in our test was by checking if the to-do list heading was visible on the page. We can also do the same here. In this mode, you can do three kinds of assertions. You can check if an element is visible or not. You can check if the element has a specific text or not. And you can also check if an element has a specific value. So this would primarily be in the case of inputs. We were doing visibility. So let's do that for this example. I'll click on this icon the icon that you see over here at the top, which says assert visibility. And then I'll click on the to-do list heading. 
If I go back to my inspector, you'll see that we have the assertion ready. Exactly the same assertion that we had in our test. So assertion also becomes a very easy thing when we do it from this playwright inspector. So essentially when you use playwright, you can get 90% of the test out of the box just by using the application. You still would have to add some things in the test here and there, but a major chunk of writing things manually is taken away from you. It just makes things a lot more easier. There's one more thing called traces that lets you debug failures in your test. As I had mentioned earlier, Playwright has too many features in it and you'd see an overlap in these features quite often. So the UI mode that we saw earlier, traces is basically the same thing. Let me change the username inside the test to user1 instead of user. So actually, before that, let me close everything from here. We don't need the code gen or the debug mode anymore. I'll change the user to user1. So this test now will fail. Let me run the test again. And this time I'll add the trace option and I'll set it to on. You can also set this option in the playwright config just like any other option that we are passing in here. Yeah, you'll see that the login test failed. And if I click on this, you'll find a new traces section at the bottom. So if I click on this trace, it will give me the same view that we had earlier when we were using the UI mode. It will give me all the steps that it executed and where the test actually failed. If I click on the error section, I'll be able to see the reason why it happened. And yeah, you can debug whatever issues you have from this traces section as well. If you want to add this inside the playwright config, you can do that by going inside this use option section. We already have the trace option here, but let me change the value to something else. There are a bunch of options here, so you can see that we have all these options, but I'll select the retain on failure option. What this means is if there's a failure, only then retain the trace. If the test passed successfully, then it doesn't make sense to have the trace. So do not retain it. Do not waste this space for tests that have passed successfully. Only keep it if the tests are failing. So yeah, that is one way of doing it. If you do this, you don't need to pass in the option here. You can directly run the test. One more thing that we can do here is to have a recording of our test execution. So inside the config, I'll pass in one more property right next to this trace option. So video is the name of the property and I'll use the same value retain on failure. So all this option does is record a video of the test that gets executed. And if there's a failure, it will retain it and you'll be able to see it inside your report. So let me run this test again. This will also fail because I did not change anything inside the test. It will fail on this step. Once it's done, I'll show you what the report looks like along with the recording. Yeah, so this test failed. And if I go inside, yeah, you'll see that there's a video section and if I play this, it will show you what happened as in from a UI standpoint, what the failure looked like. Not sure how useful this video can be, but the feature exists. So yeah, go ahead and use it. Also, all the things that I covered here, you can also achieve them with the help of the extension. So at the bottom left, you have an option to show the browser for all the tests. This is basically an alternative for the headed option that you passed inside the command line here or inside the config here. You can also enable traces by checking this show trace viewer option. You can get the ideal locator for a specific element on the screen. So if I click on this, it will open up a new Chromium window. I'll go to localhost. If I want a locator for, let's say this title, I'll click on it and inside VS code, it will give me the selector name. If I press enter, it will be copied and then I can paste it anywhere in my test. Playwright will actually look at your page and figure out the best locator. So it prioritizes the role attribute, text and the test ID for your locators. So you don't need to worry about picking out the best locator for any element. If the generator finds multiple elements matching the locator, it will improve the locator to make it resilient and uniquely identify the target element. So yeah, it's, it's very robust and it takes a lot of things away from you. You can record just like we did with the help of the code gen command using this option. Clicking on the record button actually creates a new file and adds the test directly in that file. If I click on this button, you'll see that test one spec ts was a new file that got created. So I don't need to do this. 
I'll actually cancel it. Record at cursor will not create a new file, but instead add the test actions right where your cursor is in the opened file. So if my cursor is say inside this odd spec file on line number 11, if I do record at cursor, it will open up the Chromium instance. I can go to say localhost. If I do all the things that I normally do, okay, my app is not running, but it will still give me this, this action that I did by navigating to localhost. So you'll be able to see that here. Yeah, you can see that whatever action I'm doing in that record session, it's generating the respective code inside this auth spec file itself. So that is what recorded cursor does. Right next to each of these tests, you'll also find an option to debug the test. You can run it inside a specific browser by right clicking on it and then looking for the browser here. Ideally, you should have all the environments here. But since I had commented out these two projects, we are not able to see it. I'll uncomment this for now. And let's see if we get that option. If I do right click now, then yeah, you can see that we have this new option called execute using profile. If I click on it, then we have option to run this test for a specific profile. You'll only see the option to execute using profile if it's in your config. So make sure that it's not commented out if you want to see that option. So these were a few ways to debug your application. I personally use the Playwright Inspector extensively to debug my tests and maybe the UI mode a few times. CodeGen is yet another feature that I use a lot. It's much more convenient and you can simulate user behavior to the T. So yeah, we will probably be using it in our upcoming videos as well. If there's some debugging tactic that I missed, I'll add it in the follow up videos. Do subscribe to the channel if you want more of such content and I'll see you in the next one.